Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Cabo Mail News and Community Update. I am Claudia Velo, unfortunately without Corey Ricks this week. He does send his regrets about not being able to make it to this show, but uh, fear not, we have a great show planned with Corey and myself next week. It's going to be very interesting and it's a topic that it's uh, near and dear to our hearts. And then uh, for this week, I have a uh, local news and also I will be interviewing some of our community leaders uh, about the new uh, movie, the Netflix movie, Blue Miracle, that has caused a lot of attention, that has brought a lot of attention to Los Cabos and also has had some uh, mixed reviews. So we will be talking about that. Uh, but before that, we're going to go into the news. And I also would like to remind you that you can listen, obviously, to this show on 96.3 FM, Cabo Mill. But also you can follow us on Facebook Live. Our Facebook page is Cabo Mill News. And we also have a YouTube channel and an Instagram account, all Cabo Mill News. And you can just stay in touch with everything that is happening here in Los Cabos. All our previous shows are there. So in case you missed anyone, in case you missed anyone, um, you will be able to catch them there. We've had some great guests in the past and we will continue to bring you some more interesting guests, interviews, and of course, always the local news. Moving on to this week's local news. Um, an important topic was earlier last week, the FAA downgraded Mexico's aviation safety rate rating. And um, of course, this blocks new services to the US. And there was certain concern about what that actually meant for Los Cabos. I was fortunate enough to be able to interview Rodrigo Esponda, the executive director of the Los Cabos Tourism Board, FITURCA. And he talked to me about what it actually means, what uh, impact it has in Los Cabos, which fortunately is not that bad. And, um, and we, he said a lot of things that are very interesting for us to know in terms of flights and aviation status here in Los Cabos. So let's go to that interview and then we'll come back to continue to talk about the local news. Here's Rodrigo Esponda. I'm very happy to welcome Rodrigo Esponda, Managing Director for the Los Cabos Tourism Board. Welcome Rodrigo, thank you for your time. Thank you, Claudia, as always, a pleasure talking to you. Today's topic is the downgrade that the FAA issued for uh, Mexican airlines and airplane operation. Can you please, in, in a normal personal <laughs> language, not very technical, tell us what it means for flights into Los Cabos and out of Los Cabos? Uh, yes, well, the easy answer is that uh, for Los Cabos, it has uh, very little impact, fortunately. However, it has serious implications uh, for Mexico and for the Mexican carriers in general. And in, in the medium and long run, it is not good for anyone. Um, the origin of the FAA regulation, it's a, a, a terrible accident that happened uh, in the early 80s um, of uh, one flight coming from South America into the, the United States that unfortunately crashed and then uh, as a consequence the FAA started trying to implement a way to regulate and to inspect and supervise how was the air operation from the different countries that would have connections to the United States. That was later amplified and aligned to the OASI, that is a United Nations agency that uh, oversees that, just to have an international way to regulate what was happening in the aeronautical services around the world. So the, what it means is that um, every 10 years, the FAA is, does uh, different audits uh, to the systems that it, it's very technical, but that they, they are very well implemented and every country knows exactly what are, what are the parameters that they need to comply. So after this audit that was extended because of uh, COVID-19, 
um, be, because it should have finished uh, in 2020 and it was extended. Um, they saw that there were some several elements that um, in Mexico they were not being complied with. So as a consequence, this uh, generated a downgrade uh, that hopefully, as it was expressed, uh, it would be uh, soon solved in every single element that was uh, done and um, that the airlines, the Mexican airlines, would be able to have uh, non-stop flights, new non-stop flights to the United States uh, that uh, that is one of the elements that is affecting. And the second element is the code share agreements that the Mexican carriers and the international carriers can have. So if anybody has currently a ticket uh, from Boston to Mexico City and from Mexico City to Los Cabos, and um, if this was previously issued, for example, through the Sky Team Alliance between uh, Delta and Aeromexico, with this uh, downgrade, they would have to issue a new ticket uh, with a separate type of segment, one with Delta and the other one with Aeromexico. And uh, that is one of the uh, consequences uh, that uh, this downgrade has. And this is very important for the public in general to know. If you do have a share code ticket it doesn't mean that your ticket will be canceled it's just that the airlines need to reissue the tickets as two separate segments separating and stating which airline is operating which segment of your flight correct uh, that's exactly that's correct uh, so uh, technically it would not have any any implication it's, it would be just a different type of uh, segment that would be marked on your ticket now um, as you mentioned at the beginning this downgrade um, doesn't really have a great impact for Los Cabos, fortunately, because we already have um, the flights in place that service the most important um, origins for, for Los Cabos. But what do you see uh, the impact will be for the aviation industry in Mexico in general? Well, as, as you mentioned, yes, we have currently 22 cities from the United States with nonstop flights to Los Cabos. Uh, in the next weeks, we will have new flights with JetBlue from New York and from Los Angeles daily, and um, which is definitely very, very positive. And we have 22% more seats already in the next six months uh, from the United States to Los Cabos than what we had in 2019. However, this is affecting other destinations, other emerging destinations and other cities. Uh, overall, Mexico has just recovered 65% of the total seats from the United States to Mexico that we had in 2019. So even though that we are in a very fortunate position, definitely this is affecting other cities in Mexico and other airlines. And besides, as, as you know, some of the airlines have been going through very tough financial situations as a consequence of COVID-19. Aeromexico has been going through a Chapter 11 situation with uh, tough negotiations in the United States. Um, they've been attracting new capital. So because of that, the stocks of the airlines value much less and they are less attractive to the investment because in the in the short run they would not be able to have the same expansion plans that they would have been doing if if, if they hadn't run into this downgrade situation that is that is unfortunate for for obviously the the mexican airlines and as i always like to do what is your forecast what do you think will be the result or the impact in the mid to long term of this downgrade, um, is it something that Mexico can recover from quickly? Well, the Mexican authorities have already expressed that they will review this in detail with the FAA. And um, fortunately, the FAA is a very technical agency that what they want is to have all the countries in level one. So they don't want anyone to be in level two because that that means a risk for them. So um, they, I'm sure they're gonna be working in um, different uh, working groups uh, for the specific topics that have been included in the audit. And um, hopefully it will be solved in the, in the short run. I think in 
2010, a similar situation happened, um, mm -hmm. and it was overcome in uh, almost five months, a little bit less than five months, uh, through a very tough uh, working uh, type of uh, schedule that it was established. Uh, I remember that I, I was uh, discussing that with Aeromexico at that time in the in the United States. Uh, so I think that um, in a matter of, of a year, uh, this would be solved. Uh, that's what I think it will happen because neither the Mexican government nor the U.S. one uh, would like to have this in place for too long because uh, it means a, a risk for everyone and also it is not good uh, for the uh, U.S. airlines that have uh, some code share agreements with the Mexican one. So everybody is going to be focused on solving this in the shortest time uh, possible. And fortunately for Los Cabos, uh, we would be, I'm sure, able to continue growing in connectivity to the United States uh, with the different partners that uh, we have. The um, initiation of the flights with JetBlue is a terrific news because uh, from the, all the airlines in the United States, JetBlue is one that has a very good financial situation and they have a, a very interesting business model. So, for example, now that they, are fly, they would be flying from New York and Los Angeles, they can initiate uh, flights from new cities uh, in the United States. So I, I think that that will eventually happen and that we will continue growing from non-stop flights from the United States uh, in, the, in the next year. Wonderful to have good news in the midst of not so good news. And uh, again, thank you for all the work that you, Rodrigo, and Fiturka has been doing to continue to promote tourism to Los Cabos. That was Rodrigo Esponda, Executive Director for Fiturca, which is Los Cabos Tourism Board. And um, like I said, kind of good news in the midst of not so good news, but hopefully Mexico will recover its safety ranking as number one within um, at, at the most a year, if but hopefully sooner than that. And then, well, moving on uh, with local news, of course, COVID was in the news again, even though the last few weeks it's been pretty much normal in terms of the evolution and the numbers were very being we're being very positive in terms of the number of new cases. This past week, the um, safe, the Health Safety Committee met and they reported again, we are at a plateau where the number of cases, even though it's increased a little bit over the last week, it wasn't drastic, but something that is of note is that for the first time, the most number of new cases, the most new cases uh, registered in the state were in Los Cabos rather than in La Paz. Throughout the pandemic, the norm has been that the most number, the most cases have been registered in La Paz. Nevertheless, um, for last week, out of 701 cases, total active cases registered in the state of Baja California Sur, um, there were 413 in Los Cabos, and then the rest divided between La Paz, Comondú, Muleje, and Loreto, with 251 of them in La Paz. Nevertheless, we're staying at level three, but the health authorities, of course, recommend that everybody especially the locals, continue to implement the sanitary and social distancing measures and protocols in terms of frequent hand washing, wearing face masks in areas where there's, there are crowds and, uh, and following all the, all the protocols that have been in place for more than a year now. But, um, Further to that, the Los Cabos, um, the CCC, the Coordinating Council of Los Cabos, reported last uh, Friday that um, in the COVID work group, the COVID board, um, they saw also this increase in numbers of new cases in the municipality of Los Cabos with 150 new cases reported since Wednesday. 
which means that uh, currently for Los Cabos, well, currently as of last Friday, um, the number of active patients was 352 with an average of 35 new cases per day. This again, not super dramatic numbers, but it is increasing the percentage of occupancy of, uh, that, of beds that are destined for COVID. And that has raised the occupancy level to 30%, which is above the national average of 28% in terms of hospital occupancy. If you have been following the federal government announcements, most of the states in Mexico are now in green and yellow. No other states are, uh, no states are left in red in terms of the alert system. So the country as a whole is moving towards more positive numbers in terms of uh, lesser reported cases. This spike caused a little bit of concern or cost concern among the members of the COVID board for Los Cabos. And for that is again, that call for people to continue to observe um, all the protocols and to make sure that um, we try to maintain the number of cases at a minimum. Something that is an important recommendation that the, the, the health authorities have um, voiced and continue to, to remark on is the fact that people with symptoms should seek medical attention as soon as possible. Because what's happening is that the people that end up at host, hospitals do go in as in critical, critical state. So they have to really, um, they're, they're encouraging people to register and to seek medical attention sooner rather than later. Um, moving on to other news, we are in hurricane season now, officially. Hurricane season started May 15, and it will continue through the month of November. So it is very important to be prepared. And um, it is important that everybody has a hurricane preparedness kit in case of an emergency, and that we have this ready and fresh and, and set to go before we know that there might be a storm coming because that usually is what happens is we hear there's a storm coming and then everybody's rushing to the stores and we can't find the things that we need. So just a reminder of the things that we should have at home and have ready during hurricane season, just in case there's a storm that is aimed in this direction, we need to have water. The recommendation is one gallon per person per day for several days, keep at least seven days of this much water in your home. Um, and again, is one gallon per person per day. If you have pets, also consider that your pets will be needing water. Food, make sure that you have at least a three day supply of non-perishable food. Um, of course, a battery operated radio. Um, because we will be broadcasting Cabo Mail, as you know, continues to broadcast come rain or high water. And uh, that's where the authorities communicate and is the channel that they use to communicate official announcements in case of an emergency. Make sure you do have a flashlight, have a first aid kit, extra batteries. And this, from personal experience, get new batteries because um, sometimes we have batteries in our drawer and we think that we have extra batteries, but they're so old that they no longer work when we actually need them. Uh, so extra batteries. Um, of course, we will need face masks, plastic sheeting and duct tape to cover our electronics and to make sure that they stay away from the water. Moist towelettes, garbage bags and plastic ties for um, and uh, just to make sure that we can put things away. Moist towel, it's very important for, for uh, personal sanitation. Wrench or pliers uh, to turn off utilities. A lot of apartments in this area have cylinders for gas rather than the stationary tanks. So make sure that you are able to disconnect those in case of a storm. And uh, can opener, that is manual because um, sometimes at some homes, we only have the electric one. So make sure you have a manual can opener. And um, if you can get battery chargers for your cell phones that are solar powered, 
that would be great. Um, the USB chargers also seem to work the battery packs, but make sure that you have a way to charge your cell phones or also to have um, the, the plugins to charge from your car, your car battery. Also, it is recommended to have um, one of these containers for fuel, for gasoline, because sometimes, you know, there's not a lot of gasoline in the area. So that's something that we should all have in our homes and have them ready and ready to go in case of an emergency. Another piece of local news, um, and or it's more like a, something that is happening, is next weekend, next Sunday, is the we're going to be having elections here in Los Cabos and throughout the state, or throughout the country actually. But uh, next Sunday is election day. And if you are a Mexican citizen, if you have become a Mexican citizen, you should have your voter card, your voter registration card, the INE card, I-N-E. And that is all that you need in order to be able to vote. The elections will begin at eight in the morning and the polls will close at 6 p.m. This coming, June 6th, we're going to be electing the new governor for the state of Baja California Sur, 21 state representatives called diputados in Mexico, and uh, five mayors for um, all five municipalities in Baja California Sur. So if you hold a voter registration and INE card, then make sure that you have that handy and that um, you know where your uh, voting poll, your voting poll is going to be um, and uh, go and vote. There are going to be 10 different political parties that are listed in the election ballots. And uh, there are lots of posts and sources of information. In Cabo Mill, um, they, we have been interviewing all the different candidates and talking about their platforms so that you can make an informed decision. And um, yeah, just um, ex exercise your right to vote as a Mexican citizen. That is next Sunday, June 6th. Um, polls will open at 8, 8 a.m. and will close at 6 p.m. And uh, with that, we're going to go to the first uh, break. Um, coming back from the break, we're going to be talking to Jason Stirrup, the executive director of Casa Hogar, which is, of course, um, featured, um, or, or the experience of Casa Hogar is what uh, inspired the story of Blue Miracle, a movie that was released last Thursday, May 27, to the world, and that brought the attention of everybody, of a lot of people, to Los Cabos and to Casa Hogar. And uh, so we're going to be talking to him about that. And then we're going to be talking to Linda McCatton, from, uh, who is a Rotary, and it is the director of PR Solutions. She will also be talking to us about her opinion and her, um, her point of view about this movie that has gotten mixed reviews, but overall it's good, uh, good publicity, good, good, uh, exposure for Casa Hogar and for what they do and, um, and will hopefully have a very positive impact for not only Casa Hogar, but also for Los Cabos and bring more attention to um, this area, more visitors and, uh, you know, more visitors, more money for the area. Everybody's happy. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. I'm Claudia Vela. You're listening to Cabo Mill News and Community Update right here, 96.3 FM Cabo Mill. We'll be right back. <laughs> 